what's happening in Gaza and Palestine? Uh, Gaza and Hamas. So basically, like, the conflict is actually more than 100 years old. So Britain took control of Palestine after the ruler of that part of the Middle East, the Ottoman Empire, was defeated in World War One, And the land was initially inhabited by a majority of Arabs and a minority of Jewish people. And this was when we first started to see tensions beginning to build up. Um, Britain was given a task by the international community to establish what was called a national home for Jewish people in Palestine. And in the eyes of Jewish inhabitants, it was their ancestral home. It was, quote, the promised land. That's in their scripture, right? Mm. But in the eyes of Arab Palestinians, it was their land and they opposed the move. And then between the 20s, 1920s and the 1940s, um, there was a huge rise of Jewish inhabitants and Jewish refugees immigrating to Palestine during the process of the Holocaust and after because they needed a safe place. And this was when now we're in 1947 and the UN uh, voted for Palestine to be split into two separate states, one Jewish and one Arab, with Jerusalem becoming an international city. So Jerusalem is obviously in the middle. You've got the two separate states, but Jerusalem is the international city. And this was accepted by Jewish leaders, but the Arab leaders said, no, we're not having this. And the British, basically, they fucked off. <laughs> they ran away. They couldn't, they couldn't, take, they couldn't take the heat. Um, and in 1948, they left the conflict to the Jewish leaders and the Arab leaders, and they said to them, you know, just deal with it yourselves. We don't want any part in this. And this led to the creation of the Israeli state, but naturally the Palestinians objected to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is where we see a period known as the catastrophe, and hundreds of thousands of Palestinians fled their homes. And in 1949, a ceasefire was announced, um, but Israel occupied most of the territory that had previously been a part of the Palestinian state. However, when the war broke out in 1948, we saw other Middle Eastern sides kind of invade and attempt to push the Israelis out. And after this, Jordan occupied land, which we now know as the West Bank, and Egypt occupied Gaza, right? So now, instead of being an international city, Jerusalem was divided between Israeli forces in the West and Jordanian forces in the East. And as a result of there never being a peace agreement, each side blamed the other for the conflict, which only led to more wars and fighting in the decades that followed. And, you know, th what happened was really just more wars. There was never a resolution, so we just saw more wars break out. There was another war in 1967, and Israel and Palestine engaged in another war. And this is when Israel occupied um, East Jerusalem, mm. which is the key tension that we're seeing today and the West Bank, as well as the Syrian Golan Heights and Gaza. And most of Palestinian refugees and their descendants now live in Gaza and the West Bank, but they refused access to return to their homes in occupied Israel because Israel believes that it's going to overwhelm uh, the state and threaten its existence as a Jewish state. And I think this is really important to think about. You know, after the Holocaust, millions of Jews were persecuted, right? Mm. And I'm talking from a very unbiased kind of viewpoint here because I'm neither Middle Eastern, Arab, Muslim, and I'm neither Jewish or Israeli, right? Mm. But you have to understand that if your religion is persecuted in the way that the Jews were during the Holocaust, there is a rationale behind wanting a state that you can know that you're protected in. That is one argument that Israel has put forward, right? But Israel still occupies the West Bank to this day. And although it's pulled out of Gaza, pulled out of Gaza, the UN still sees it as occupied territory. And also Israel claims the whole of Jerusalem as the Israeli capital. N it's not an international city. Israel claims the whole of Jerusalem as the capital, whereas the Palestinian people see East Jerusalem as the capital of a future Palestinian state. And, I mean, uh, this is another massive tension. The U.S. 
recognized under Trump, the US recognized Jerusalem as the Israeli capital. And that caused huge, huge uproar because, you know, although they are one of a very small number of countries to recognize Jerusalem as the Israeli capital, the Palestinian people feel like they're being left out in the cold by the West. You know, they're being pushed out of their own homes by Israel and the West. Um, So who's protecting them is really like the main question that people ask. And that's where we see Hamas. Um, So Hamas arose because, well, they occupy Gaza. They rule Gaza, the Palestinians. And um, they arose because there was a broad sentiment that the Palestinian government were failing the Palestinian people. So they needed someone to protect them. And this is what caused so many people to turn to Hamas. It's not because the Palestinian people are saying, you know, we want Jews gone. That's not what they're saying. It's that Hamas are the only group to protect them, right? And they are the key fighters against Israel. Um, Although Egypt and Israel control borders really tightly, really tightly to stop weapons getting to Hamas, that hasn't stopped their access at all. I mean, obviously, there wouldn't be this massive fuck-off conflict going on <laughs> if it had. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank say that they're suffering as a result of Israeli actions and restrictions. However, Israel says they're only protecting themselves from Palestinian violence, which is authorised by Hamas. So since the beginning, this led us to what we're seeing in Sheikh Jarrah. And um, since the beginning of Ramadan, there have been an unprecedented well it's not really unprecedented because there was always this tension but there was an unprecedented conflict in terms of just how it came about just completely exploded out of nowhere and it was between the israeli forces and the palestinians right and this is what we've been seeing in the news recently and um things really kicked off and became international news when protests against the eviction of six palestinian families um, occurred in order to provide Israeli Jewish settlers with homes in a very leafy suburban neighborhood of Sheikh Jarrah. And um, that basically caused uproar. Uh, you've seen the protests that have been happening, you've seen the social media posts that have been happening, you've seen the arguments that have been happening, you've seen the violence that's been going on. It was really the Palestinian people felt that they had been pushed too far. Mm. Hamas felt that it had gone too far. And we're seeing a common theme of key problems here now. And Israel and Palestine can't agree on what should happen to Palestinian refugees, if Jewish settlements occupied in the West Bank should stay or be removed. And Jewish settlements in the West Bank are basically um, (coughs) where... Israel will evict Palestinian people from their homes and then become settlements for Israeli people, Israeli Jews, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Whether the two sides should share Jerusalem. And most of all, and this is key, which doesn't really get talked about, but this is also key, um, whether a Palestinian state should be created alongside Israel after its failure to happen in the 1940s after Britain fucked off and said, you know what, you you not not deal with this. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it's it's vital it's vital that people understand that this is not just a conflict that has happened in the last two months Mm. in the last two years this is a conflict that has been going on it's a very sensitive very emotion emotional conflict that's been going on Mm. for a hundred years you know yeah um i mean but obviously israel is very strongly linked with judaism And I want to make it so clear that this isn't a conflict about religion, but it's been turned into a conflict about religion by people external to Israel-Palestine. So it has been turned into a conflict that we are seeing aggressive anti-Semitic comments being made. It has been turned into a conflict where misinformation is being spread. But that isn't what the Palestinian people want it to be. They just want to go home 
They want to be safe in their homes and they wanted to be treated fairly by the Israeli government. Um, yes, Israelis are mostly Jewish and Palestinians are mostly Muslim or Christian, right? But religion wasn't the driver of the conflict. You know, this wasn't a clash over religious differences, but it was actually a conflict between nationalities and mm. and it was a secular issue of land and nationhood and you know this is where we see the difference between zionism and judaism mm. you know um a zionist is someone who strives for an independent jewish state but so in this case that's israel right uh, to many religious Jewish people, Israel is, you know, quote, the promised land. But many non-religious Jewish people also value the fact that there is a state where people of their faith can live safely after the horrors of the Holocaust. Mm. I mean, we all learn about the Holocaust in history, but I don't think we truly learn about the Holocaust yeah, in like history. There was a lot of bad stuff that happened during them times. I mean, it was, it well, was horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrendous. I mean... Mm. You can't think of anything, you know, the genocide that occurred under Hitler, the way that the Jewish people were treated, the way that they were completely persecuted just for believing in their God, mm. you know? That is, what, that is what makes me kind of see the rationality behind Israel, right? Mm. I can see why they are striving so hard for this independent state so yeah n you know to non-practicing jews it they still do agree with israel because they want to know that there is something where some a place where they can live safely but there are a large number of jewish people living both in israel and globally who are in favor of a palestinian state alongside an israeli state mm -hmm. you know and they aren't in favour of the forced evictions and the violence that's being put upon the Palestinian people. Mm. You know, I think the most powerful thing for me was seeing at the Free Palestine March, seeing um, Orthodox a group of Orthodox Jewish men with a banner that just said, say no to Zionism, say no to forced evictions and say no to violence. A lot of Jewish people just want peace, you know? And, I mean, the commonly expressed view of most Palestinians isn't that they want Jewish people gone. That's not what they want. But they just want fair treatment, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, it's really difficult for people who live in the UK to understand because we don't live on a continent that is surrounded by countries that we are in conflict with do you know what i mean yeah mm. i mean the closest that i could describe it to is northern ireland and ireland in terms of they are warring with each other about the borders and you know independence and we, we saw the riots in ireland not too long ago I, that's the closest example i have but we can't really gauge what it's like i mean i'm um, you're living in a country and your neighboring you know your neighbors hate you there is violence. You are at risk every single day. We're seeing mm -hmm. comments made by young boys saying, you know, and young women say, I go to bed fully dressed because if people evict me from my home in the middle of the night, I don't want to be indecent. You know, um, but I saw a little boy say to a cameraman, I, I make sure that my hair is brushed because if I killed, I, if I get killed in the evening, I, I want to make sure that I look nice when I'm killed. A Palestinian wow. little boy. And it's, ah, oh, man, I just don't know. It's just, it is so heartbreaking to see that I just, it's like, it feels like it's so out of everyone's grip. Mm -hmm. And it feels like the longer that it's gone on, the less we can do about it. Do you know what I mean? The really interesting question is about the West supporting Palestine why don't the West support Palestine? Why aren't they just, you know, why aren't they getting involved? Mm. Um, I mean, uh, the US and Israel have an arms treaty and the 
Israel get most of their arms from the US, right? Mm. Um, and I mean, there's this theory that Israel was created by the West as an apology for the Holocaust, right? It was, it was, um, you know, we're sorry that we, we let so many Jewish people die at the hands of Hitler. But I, I personally really don't think that's true. Um, there's this whole idea of the West funding Israel, Israeli military acts, though, as an argument to prove this theory, which people often say, well, you know, the West wouldn't give them all these weapons if they weren't apologising for the Holocaust. And it does make sense, but I'm still not sold on it. But as I said earlier, Trump did declare Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, and that caused... Um, outrage outrage there were protests you know internationally i remember in new york there was a huge protest uh, after trump declared israel capital um uh, jerusalem capital of israel um many palestinians and jewish people don't support israeli occupation as i said so as well as many onlookers across the world but then this is really interesting because we are seeing attitudes in the west change so with the biden administration We've basically seen the reverse, right? Biden reversed Trump's actions and he restored $230 million worth of aid for Palestinian people. So he gave them $230 million worth of aid to help them, to help them rebuild. But why did he give sell arms to Israel? (laughs) He hasn't. So this is the thing. Trump in 2016 created a peace treaty between Israel and Palestine. But it was, I mean, it didn't take, you know, you don't have to be an idiot to look at that treaty and see that it was overly biased to Israel. Jerusalem would become capital, it included all sorts of funding for Israeli military forces, you know, but it was a peace treaty to make sure that the Palestinian side and the Israeli side were at peace and there was no more conflict. The Israelis... They loved it, right? But the Palestinians were like, fuck that, no way, right? So we see Biden come in, and Biden's signing a lot of executive orders and executive actions, which are basically just like, he doesn't have to go through Congress to get them, you know, agreed to. He just signs a bill, and whatever he says goes, right? So he gives them $230 million quite recently um, worth of aid. Um, and he re- this is a reverse because Trump cut this off, Right? Um, so countries in the EU as well, such as France, Portugal, Spain, have sent aid to Palestine due to domestic policies between the two of them. But every country does seem really hesitant about stepping forward and directly condemning either side of the government, you know, Israel or Palestine. No one wants to take a side, right, because it is so sensitive But we have seen a lot of voices, important voices. So Bernie Sanders, for example, AOC, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, an American, Latin American, American politician, right? Um, Calling uh, MPs in the UK, right? Calling for Palestine to be, you know, liberated, to, to be helped. And MPs in Parliament have been calling for Johnson to ensure the protection of Palestinian people. But Johnson has sent out a fucking tweet saying that he hopes for a durable solution, a durable solution for the Palesti- between Palestine and Israel. And you know what I find crazy? Mm. So in Belarus, the president of Belarus landed a flight that was going over Belarus and arrested an independent journalist. Oh, yeah. Y- mm-hmm. 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 Alexander Lukashenko, I think he's called, right? And he is strongly tied to Russia. And immediately, when I, when I say immediately, I literally mean like within seconds. Dominic Raab, Boris Johnson, condemning the Belarusian pres- president, saying you had no right to do that. You have to release this independent journalist who they'd arrested on this flight as it was flying over Belarus. You know, they were imposing economic sanctions on Belarus. This is all in the last couple of days, right? They got involved immediately. And with football as well, when the uh, European... Oh, fuck. I can't remember. Do you remember they created the league, the European Super League? Super League, yeah. 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 
in football as well. Boris Johnson like hops on that train immediately. He's like, no, that's not happening. Not on my watch. <laughs> no way, right? I find it crazy how he can, you know, I, I think it was admirable for him to step in and impose economic sanctions on the Belarusian president because they are strongly linked to Russia, who obviously we don't have great relations with in the UK. So admirable that he's trying to get this journalist out, right? Mm. But why can he do that for one independent journalist and football, but he can't, you know, step in and condemn the loss of human life? I find it crazy how the West, you know, Biden has done something great by giving aid. I do, I do, uh, I think that's great. But I think that is also political just as much as it is to show that he's reversing Trump's actions to Republicans as a Democrat Shoot. president, right? Mm -hmm. So this whole buildup of neglect towards Palestine has just allowed, in my opinion, has allowed the Israeli government to harm Palestinian people and treat them unfairly. And now we've really seen the Palestinian people reach the final straw and Hamas, very importantly, we've seen Hamas reach the final straw. And that is why these rockets are being fired. And that is why Israel is sending rockets back to the Gaza Strip. And, you know, when protesting kicked off, it was exacerbated by the evictions in Sheikh Jarrah. But that was fairly normal. I think it's very much a case of the limits that the Palestinian people were being pushed to that caused this conflict to get so out of hand. The evictions weren't abnormal. Israel was evicting a lot of Palestinian families. But it was, it was kind of like the last drop of water that caused the glass to spill over. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I mean, Sheikh Jarrah, like, we've seen the protests globally. And I think, you know, there's a point there. There's a point to protest. I if fighting for what's right, we're sending messages. We're sending messages to our governments. We're sending messages to the Israeli government. Mm. And we're saying, you know, you can't keep doing this. But do you think, like... Is there any point? Because obviously, we're, we're in the UK and that. Mm -hmm. like what does protesting here in the UK do to help the Palestinians? And is there other ways for people to help Palestinians via charity or mm -hmm. by certain other causes and that? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a really good point. I think protests can go one of two ways. They can either send a message really effectively or they can get very out of hand. Um... I think the Free Palestine protests globally have sent the message effectively, but I think there have been parts where it has turned anti-Semitic. Mm -hmm. There have been parts, I mean, I don't know if you heard about this, but... Um, Finchley. Yeah, Finchley Road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, convoy of cars with Palestinian men in them with megaphones. going. In North London is a very Jewish area. It is very... Especially Barnet side. Uh, Barnet, exactly. So we are seeing, I think these guys were from Wembley, and they were coming down Finchley Road. They were screaming, fuck the Jews, kill the Jews, rape their daughters, you know, mm -hmm. just horrendous things. And I, I go, to, for, for me, I go to a school that is quite heavily Jewish, right? And to see how shaken my friends were you know to see how th they felt unsafe because you know the war the holocaust wasn't even a hundred years ago we're not no, yeah that's true yeah, it's mad yeah. To think about it. so you know it's a lifetime ago but a lifetime means that parents know about it and grandkids know about it and we get taught about it and it's still very sensitive to talk about today so i think there is a point of protesting but i think we also need to be very careful in the ways in which we protest we need to realize that you can't take advantage of a situation and make it you can't hijack a protest i i, I got sad i got sad and i was with my mum I was with my mum, my mum's best friend, my mum's best friend's sisters, um, my mum's other really good friend, and they're, they're m obviously my mum isn't, but they are all Middle Eastern, Syrian, um, Iranian. And we left the protest when we saw the uh, Israeli flag being burnt from the top of a building and anti-Semitic slurs being screamed. We left the protest and uh, my mum's best friend just said, "This is that is not what this is about, right? Mm -hmm. I think, you know, protest, send 
letters to your MPs. I know everyone thinks that that sounds like it's a lot of effort, but if you have a letter, then you have reason to go to Parliament. Sign petitions. Once petitions get a certain number of um, signatures, they are obliged to be discussed in Parliament. Zara Sultan is an incredible, incredible example of an MP. She's a Labour MP. Oh, she's that Asian, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've got to love her. She's fantastic. I mean, she is fantastic. I mean, she's not my constituent, but she's been really pushing the UK government. She's been standing up in Parliament. She's been fighting for what's right. You know, we have a voice. We have a say in this. We can bring our governments to look at this situation. You just have to do it in the right way. 